Writer and historian Wallace Stegner called America's national parks the best idea we ever had. And we all know about Yosemite and Yellowstone, where there are sure to be big crowds this summer. But there are 432 national parks in all. So reach, we reached out to Kurt Repencheck, who runs the great independent nonprofit website, National Parks Traveler, to see if he had some ideas for five national parks that you might not have thought of. He was a correspondent for the AP before he started the site and wrote three national park guidebooks. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. And Larry, you're absolutely right. There are going to be jam-packed web or national parks this summer. They're already sending out advisories about uh, Memorial Day weekend and how crowded things are going to be. Um, to get away, uh, a buddy and I went to this place behind me, um, Lake Powell at Glen Canyon National Recreation Area, and we paddled away uh, from shore in two kayaks, spent about 40, three days doing 40 miles, and uh, it was a great escape. Where wow. was that one? That's in southern Utah, okay. um, Glen Canyon National Recreation Area. Now, I don't know if that made our list of the top five, but the first yeah. one we have uh, here that you mentioned is North Carolina Cape Lookout National Seashore. You know, that is my favorite national seashore. And the reason I say that is because it's what I consider a wild, a truly wild seashore. Um, just to the north of Cape Lookout, you've got Cape Hatteras National Seashore, and it's got a lot of villages and, and built up infrastructure. At Cape Lookout, you have three barrier islands that uh, you have to take a ferry, um, a small ferry to get to. And uh, there's open sand dunes. There's uh, some rustic cabins that uh, fishermen use for surf casting off the, the shore there. And it's just beautiful because uh, there's no built up infrastructure. That's now, these great. are all these that you're mentioning, are there places to stay? Is it do you camp out at all of these or is it different at every park? You know, it varies from park okay. to park. At Cape at Cape Lookout, for instance, as I mentioned, they've got um, what I call rustic cabins, and they're they're kind of plywood cabins that are thrown together, and you have to bring your own bedding and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But they're they're right in the sand dunes, not far from the ocean, and um, they're great for you know if you like to fish or if you want to spend a, a short weekend out there. And uh, you can also sea kayak and and camp in the dunes if you want, if you're experienced to do that. But um, other than that, there's no lodging on Cape Lookout. All right, and we have uh, Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve in Colorado. Absolutely, and that's, uh, I think that's one of the hidden gems because uh, across state in Colorado, you've got Rocky Mountain National Park and you've got uh, Mesa Verde National Park that seem to, to grab all the news, but Great Sand Dunes, it's uh, 150,000 acres and it, it ranges from sand dunes, North America's tallest sand dunes that go up to 700, wow. 750 feet. And then you can climb to the top of Star Dune, they call it, and just get this incredible vista across thousands of acres of sand dunes. And then off to the east, you've got the Sangre de Cristo Mountains, which are part of the park, and which rise to 12,000 feet. And so you've really got a combination of experiences, whether you want to climb the sand dunes and slide down, um, play in Madano Creek as they're doing there, or go on a backpack trip up to the alpine um, upper reaches of the park. It's just a really diverse landscape. You've got bison, you've got elk, you've got sandhill cranes. Just wonderful. All right, next in Michigan, Sleeping Bear Dunes. Sleeping Bear Dunes, um, one of the national lake shores, and again, it's kind of off the beaten path. And this is really a bucolic setting. I mean, it was pulled together from 2,000 individual tracks to create the national lakeshore. You've got uh, Lake Michigan there, 35 miles of lakefront. There are two islands, the Manitou Islands offshore, which you can go explore. Um, you've got inland national, you've got forests. There's a 17-mile multi-use trail. Just a lot of activities that you can do kayaking on the Platte River. It's uh, something I did, and um, I had this kingfisher, a, a bird species, that was just kind of hopping in front of me. He would fly down about 15 yards, and when I floated up to him, he'd fly down another hmm. 15 yards. Just beautiful place to get away from it all. All right, next, Wind Cave National Park in South Dakota. Another overlooked gem, and Wind Cave is actually one of the oldest national parks in uh, America. It was created in 1903. <laughs> and um, it's the eighth national park that uh, joined the system. And it's famous because there's a cleft in the rock there where the winds actually come out upwards of 70 miles an hour, and that's because of a differential in the um, air pressure. But um, aside from uh, the, the caves there, and they've got some wonderful um, underground cave tours, you've got 35,000 acres of uh, the Black Hills to roam around, and there's bison herds up there, and there's trails where you can go hiking. And one of the beauties about going to Wind Cave 
you know, if you want to spend a week in the region there and you fly into Rapid City, you've got Wind Cave National Park, you've got Jewel Cave National Monument just 30 miles away from Wind Cave, you've got Badlands National Park, which isn't too far away, and Mount Rushmore. So you could piece together a beautiful four national park visit in a week. Okay, and the last one in California, Lassen Volcanic National Park. Yeah, Lassen Volcanic is uh, another gem. Um, uh, my young son, my youngest son, Sean, and I were able to visit that a couple of years ago. It's north of Yosemite, you know, Yosemite, Sequoia, Kings Canyon. Grab most of the, the visitation of national parks in California. Lassen is really kind of unique. It's uh, built around this Lassen Peak, which is an active volcano. It last erupted in uh, 1915, in May of 1915, um, and it's probably dormant now would be more uh, accurate um, description of it. But you've got um, four different types of volcanoes in Lassen Volcanic. You've got some beautiful forests. There's eight campgrounds that you can camp at. Um, there's the trail that leads up to the top of uh, the, the mountain there, Lassen Peak. Um, we hiked up there and there were a lot of people. Um, they had great cell reception, so they were snapping pictures and sending the pictures across the country. Um, there's an area there called the Devastated Area that has um, big boulders and, and whatnot from the last volcanic eruption back in May of 19, uh, 1915. And you can hike through that area and, and see some of the the power of uh, volcanics right there in the National Park. Well, very and cool. Last, Lassen also is the southern reach of what's called the Volcanic Legacy Highway, and that's a 500-mile highway that goes from Northern California into Oregon to different um, volcanoes. And my son and I actually drove from, from Lassen up to Crater Lake um, National Park in Southern Oregon. Wow. Well, you can check out nationalparkstraveler.org. You can uh, follow them on Twitter and Instagram. Lots of great ideas. Kurt, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Have a great day.